if that sticks at election day, New York Times poll shows Trump is polling over 20% right now with black voters. That is bonkers, you guys. That is bonkers. And I think it partly has to do, there's a lot of variables in this, but I think it partly has to do with what uh, Barack Obama said about black men that, you know, it's kind of their fault and all these things. And also the fact that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden haven't done anything for the black community. So Murdoch warned on Monday that if current polls are any indication, the Democrats could be in real trouble with black voters come election day. Now, early voting says something a little bit different, and we'll get there. But for the most part, uh, right now, he, he's right. Uh, it's a big problem. I mean, uh, black voters create, uh, constitute such a big part of the Democrat base. You take that out and the whole thing sort of falls over. Mm. And this is a result of some uh, very simple question that President Trump has asked uh, black voters since 2016. What the hell do you have to lose? And uh, they've responded to that question thinking, well, you know, we keep voting Democrat and things just don't seem to get better. Uh, and so his report has gone from 8% in 2016 up to 12% of the black vote in 2020. And now, according to polls, he's somewhere at 20, maybe 23, 24% of the black vote. And if that sticks into election day, the Democrats are going to be in very big trouble. That is, oh. that is a, a very large chunk of their constituency to, to walk out of them. And the whole thing's going to come crashing down if, that, if those numbers hold up. Oh, gee, what do you know? Who's in North Carolina again? Oh, it's Mr. 45, Donald J. Trump. Gee, uh, there again, because he cares about America, unlike Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or really just any Democrat for that matter. Uh, it's sad. It's sad what's going on here. You also have CNN saying no matter how you slice the data, Trump seems to be the strongest Republican with black voters since the 1960s. Woof. Wow. Now, I never noticed before and make me go, whoa. This is one of them, all right? This is the Democratic margin among black men under the age of 45 in presidential elections. You go back to November of 2012, what do you see? You see Obama by 81. Clinton only won him by 63. Then we're all the way down to Biden last time around yeah. by 53. A tremendous drop already. And then you take a look at the average of the most recent polls, and Kamala Harris is up by only 41 points. That is about half the margin that Obama won them by back in November of 2012. And this, I think, is, you know, when Barack Obama goes in last week when he was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, essentially talking to young black men, he made it seem like it was a Kamala Harris specific problem. Uh uh. This is part of a. Let's be fair, though. I wish that he would have shown the Democrat candidates before Obama, because I guarantee you that was the peak of the Democrats. And most likely there was people voting for Barack Obama because he's a black man and they wanted to see a first black president ever. So the black community went out and voted for him. I'm not saying that was everybody, but it sure in hell was a lot of people. So that's why you saw it peak and maybe the numbers took some time to come back down. And uh, that's just what we're seeing now. So maybe I should find out some research and figure out what the numbers were prior to Obama. A long-standing yeah. trend of young black men moving away from the Democratic Party, and Kamala Harris is just the latest to face that magnitude of black, younger black men going towards the Republican. That was, was what most interesting here is the trend line and where some of the biggest drops happened or already happened in this case. How about black men overall? How about black men overall? It's part of the same picture, you know. We're looking once again at younger black men. It looks like the worst Democratic performance since 1960, since JFK versus Richard Nixon. It's the same thing among black men overall. Again, part of a similar trend, but here actually the drop off isn't as dramatic, right? Barack Obama won him by 85. Then you see 71 with Clinton, 69. Biden, basically the same thing, holding steady. But here again, very, very weak. Only a 54 point margin. Now again. But she's a black woman. But she's a black woman. She told me. Yeah, weird. Huh. 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 Still winning them by a large margin, but considerably lower than what we're used to. Certainly considerably lower what we had during the Obama years. The bottom line is Kamala Harris with younger black men and then black men overall putting in historically weak performance for a Democratic. Is candidate. she getting any relief with black women? All right. So, you know, we're talking about the trend line, right? And black women, look, she's doing better with black women than she is doing among black men. But here, there isn't a trend line almost until we get to Kamala Harris. So again, this is a black mar uh, margin among black women. Woof, Kamala's having a rough time with her own community. With her own community. And uh, it, it ain't, it just, it's just not looking good, you guys. Just across the board, it's not looking good. 
And uh, I want to show you what the board looks like right now with uh, early voting. So early voting started September 6th in some areas. And then CBS News vice president debate happened October 1st and election day is November 5th. So this is what we got right here from Fox News. This is what it's looking like currently. Now, no surprises other than maybe Georgia. Uh, Nevada, I heard, could go red. That right now it is going, it's starting to lean a little bit more red, which is good for us. We need that. We need Nevada. Arizona says toss up, maybe, maybe. We're not going to get Colorado, New Mexico. The fact that even Texas says likely are is a joke. Texas, can you get your ish together, please? Um, I don't know. These are all toss ups. So, so swing states are always toss ups, right? That's why they're there. Uh, Georgia, though, I was expecting likely are. That one is is throwing me for a little bit of a loop. So out of all the states that are in yellow, Georgia was the one I was expecting to be kind of bright red, not dark red, but bright red. Uh, same thing with a little bit with North Carolina, with what uh, has gone with the hurricane, what uh, has gone on with uh, them not getting any support from like FEMA, even though FEMA I know is there, but you understand in terms of totality, they're not getting the support. Uh, guys, North Carolina, you just got effed over. And if you go and vote for Kamala, after the lack of support she's giving you, and you think that all of a sudden in four years or after the election that she's going to start giving you support again, you got another thing coming to you. And there's something else wrong. The fact that you could you could feel and, and see that type of devastation and that with your own two feet, you're going to walk away from your house that was blown away and go to the polls and vote for Kamala is truly a wild, wild thing that I don't know if I'll ever see in my lifetime again. And I hope not, because that's insane. That's insane. Like no support, you're sleeping in a tent. But this is what we got going on right now. So we need, uh, we need Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, hopefully. And we got some update news on Pennsylvania. Remember, Pennsylvania, we won't know the true of results three to four days after the election. So around November 9th and 10th, we will get those results. Well, why, Brad? Well, I'll give you the reason why. We'll know 75% of the results election night. The other 25%, they're telling us that these are votes from overseas. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you know, you're talking millions of people. Seven, 75 here, 25% allegedly of Pennsylvania lives overseas. I did not know that. That is news to me. Millions of people all of a sudden. So we're going to find out the foosers begin. Remember, Michigan's not cleaning up their voter registration rolls. So not only are they having illegal immigrants vote, but they're having people vote from different states and they're getting multiple ballots. So it's all happening in Michigan and dead people are voting. This is not like satire. This is not a joke. This is all fact. This is all legitimate. Nevada, Nevada as well is not cleaning up their voter registration rolls. So Nevada was known in the 2020 election for people from voting for properties that physically did not exist. There was no home there. There was no property. It was a freaking desert, literally just a desert. There was also a freeway on multiple house properties that somehow people voted from. Uh, people were voting from properties that didn't uh, uh, they no longer resided at. You can also go there and knock on the door and just ask the people, hey, did you vote for Joe? And they'll say, no, I voted for Trump and their ballots were switched. So all this you could do yourself. You could pull up the voter registration rolls and actually go and visit these properties yourselves. Illegal immigrants are voting. You're going to see illegals voting in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, California. Doesn't really matter. It's a solid D state. It's my home state. It's crap. Um, so and then Georgia. I haven't heard much from Georgia other than the fact of, hey, you know, we should have the black vote. There's a lot of black people that live in Georgia. Hopefully that swings red if they have any sort of uh, inkling of what's been going on for the last three and a half years. And uh, I expect North Carolina, hopefully Pennsylvania. Best state, man. There's some foosery going on in that state. Here's some other polls for you. I want to see if I can zoom in on this for you all because it's kind of small, kind of like Timmy uh, Harris supporters are more likely to think 2024 votes will be counted accurately. Yo, what planet do you live on? Harris supporters are more likely to think that 2024 votes will be counted accurately. Jesus, bro. Why? Why? Even, even if Trump wins, I'm still going to have my antennas going on, going, okay, who are all the people that voted illegally, fraudulently? Even for Trump or for for, for uh, Harris, it doesn't matter. They never wanted to look under the hood. I guarantee you if Trump wins, I guarantee you the left will be like, elections rigged. Oh, count the votes. We need recounts. The lawsuits will start, right? 
just after they get done for four years. Oh, well, Trump won't certify elections. Oh, they'll be quick, right? Because then they'll gaslight you. We never said that. We never said that he sat there and did all those things. And he, he said those things. We never said that. Yeah, right. You guys do that all the time, you freaking liberals. Uh, all registered voters, 58% think uh, the votes will be counted accurately. I'm not part of that 58%, by the way. Harris is at 83% and then Trump supporters 35, which I'm surprised it's even 35. Uh, no, not confident. I'm part of that 41, uh, 17, and then 65. So I'm a Trump supporter. I'll be voting for Trump. I'm part of that 65. I do not think they'll be voted counted both ways, both ways accurately, because these people are idiots. Do you remember that vertical spike that happened overnight that was allegedly a clerical error? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of idiots. Yep, that's, that's what they are. I don't think they can do anything correctly. These are the same people that said, oh, you know what? The water pipe burst, clear it out, everybody out, put up poster boards, right? 